One God, Two Voices, Chapter 1. The picture on the previous page is taken from a Masonic edition of a King James Bible. The picture includes the flag, the capital, the all-seeing eye representing the sun, and Washington in his most worshipful master outfit and the phrase, the brotherhood of man, the fatherhood of God. All these images have profound and significant meaning and will be discussed in detail in later chapters. What we will review in this chapter is the message presented in this illustration, for it reveals the final deception of man. This belief is the mortar used to build the final kingdom of man known as Washington. This official proclamation of Washington, that there is one father of all mankind, who are all brothers, sounds good, but is it? This belief in the fatherhood of God and brotherhood of man is the foundation of Masonic belief. Thus it is also the belief of our current system of government, a religious agenda of our current government, which claims to be neutral in religious matters. Interesting note, the popular and critical Bible Encyclopedia, Volume 1, page 1481, states, The fatherhood of God was an omnipresent thought to the Romans as they prayed to their god of war, Mars. Freemasons consider the greatest sin to be religious bigotry, or to simplify any religion that claims it has a monopoly on truth. According to Masonic dogma, Christ cannot be the only way to the Father, since there are many paths to God. Freemasonry has no need for a savior, for it is their view that the nature of man is not corrupt. Freemasonry as a whole discards Christ's claim of being the only way to salvation, simply because they reject the Genesis story concerning the fall of man. This Masonic rejection of Christ as the only begotten Son of God, the only way to salvation, places Masonry in the category of Antichrist. Read 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth the only begotten Son? He is Antichrist. Once you realize that an Antichrist is, and the reality of Antichrist among us, controlling our government, then you will have a better understanding about the error and deception of their claim that we are all brothers serving the same God. The Bible asks in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14, what hath light to do with darkness? What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what concord hath Christ with Baal? Or between he that believes in Christ with an infidel? Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and I will receive you, and be a father unto you, and you will be my sons and daughters. This scripture not only warns us to be separate and come out from among those who deny the truth, but also reveals God is not the father of all, nor are all sons and daughters brothers and sisters of one father. Thus the Masonic claims of the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man begins to unravel in the light of the truth proclaimed in the Bible. Freemasonry is a polytheistic cult which practices sorcery high magic, and founded on occult rituals or originating in Babylon. Freemasonry rejected the cornerstone called Christ, for they have no need for a savior. This would be an appropriate time to mention that all Masons are not guilty of involvement of practicing occult Masonry. For the most part, Freemasons are citizens with good intentions trying to do good deeds. However, once the truth is revealed, a choice must be made to either support or become separate from such. The Masons know this to be the truth and is why they keep most of their members in the dark about the hidden agenda of Freemasonry, of its defiance and rebellion against the living God of Israel. Consider page 227 of the book, Facts for Freemasons, which claims that occult Masonry is Masonic philosophies or degrees which are more profound than the membership at large comprehends. Also, occult sciences are sciences which are hidden or would not be appreciated or understood by the less educated. 
These occult sciences practiced by Washington's preferred religious establishment, Freemasonry, will re be reviewed later in the book. The important matter at hand is to review the foundation of this empire, to see if it was built upon a rock-solid foundation, or built upon the sand soon to collapse. The fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man sounds good, but it is not. This Masonic creed sounds righteous, but it is evil. It is deception in its most advanced form. Just like Washington's faith-based initiative, it sounds like a noble cause, but in reality it is a violation of federal and state constitutional laws, as well as a violation of God's first commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods. It is amazing to see the support Washington has from the Christian community for this faith-based initiative a program which allows for the first time in American history tax dollars to be distributed to religious organizations to use for social programs. The reason for such support from the Christian community is because they will be recipients of tax dollars, thinking of all the good they can do with this money, especially since tax dollars in the collection plate have been diminishing. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Christians' love for money has obviously blinded them to the fact that they are supporting that, which is contrary to God's law, polytheism. Polytheism is the belief in many gods or goddesses. Monotheism is the belief of one God. When government officially acknowledges all religions as being equal, it is in effect acknowledging all religions, gods and or goddesses as being equal. By funding these other religions and their gods, the government is in fact having other gods, a direct violation of God's first commandment. Not only is this a violation of God's laws, but also an official preference to polytheism over monotheism.